Welcome to the Empirical Rule 68.95.99.7. Those are the key numbers. 68% of all the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of all the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. 99.7% of all the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean. What's all that trying to tell us? Well, let's draw a picture of these. When you draw the bell curve, and you should draw a lot of bell curves, notice mine aren't exactly perfect, but do you see how we go concave down and then our curve goes concave up? That point where we change the concavity, that's called an inflection point. And if you draw a vertical line straight down from that inflection point, that should be one standard deviation away from the mean. So that distance is one standard deviation. If I used an example where my mean was 65 and my standard deviation was 10, and I chose those numbers at random, then one standard deviation below the mean, 65 minus 10, that would put this point at 55. And one standard deviation above the mean, 65 plus 10, this would be 75. And our empirical rule says that this area in here is 68%. So if I went two standard deviations down and two standard deviations up, this area would be 95%. If we take 65 minus 2 times 10, I'm at 45 at this point. This point is 85. If we went three standard deviations below the mean and three standard deviations above the mean, that area is 99.7% of the area under the curve, according to the empirical rule. What does that mean? Well, three standard deviations down puts me at 35. Three standard deviations up puts me at 95. This says the probability that an observation lies within three standard deviations of the mean, or in this case, the observation lies between 35 and 95, is 99.7% or 0.997 in decimal talk. That takes a long time to write, so we use notation in statistics, P parenthesis, that means the probability that X lies between 35 is less than X is less than 95 equals 0.997. And if you said 99.7%, that would be every bit as good. But this empirical rule gives us a lot more information than that. Let's blow this up a little bit. If I drew a line vertically through the mean up to the top of the curve, this curve is symmetrical. The empirical rule only works on symmetrical bell curves.
since it's symmetrical, this area to the left of the mean is the same as the area to the right of the mean. Each of these halves is 50%. Let's take that a step further. If we go one standard deviation down using that same data where the mean is 65, standard deviation is 10. If this space is 68%, then if I cut it in half at the mean, I have 34% and 34%. And if this whole space is 50%, then 50 minus 34 tells me that I have 16% in each of the tails. Let's look at two standard deviations out. Empirical rule says the area between those two vertical lines I just drew is 95%. If I subtracted out the middle 68%, which we split into 34, 34, That's going to leave me with 27%. If I divide that 27 in half, I have 13.5% in each of these slices. This says the probability that x is between 45 and 55 equals 13.5%. The probability x is between 75 and 85 is 13.5%. Let's go to the third standard deviation out. We said from 35 to 95 was 99.7 percent of the data under the curve. If I subtract off the 95 percent that's between 45 and 85, I have 4.7 percent. If we divide that 4.7 by 2, I have 2.35% between 35 and 45. If there's 2.35% in those two slices and 13.5% in these two slices, and 34% in these two slices. That covers 99.7%. 100% lies under the curve. 100 minus 99.7 leaves me with 0.3% in each of these tails going out to negative and positive infinity. Divide that 0.3% in half. I have 0.15% in each tail. That's the empirical rule. So let's do a problem with it. Let's say 
we want to know the probability x lies between 45 and 75. Well, according to my empirical rule, I've got 0 0.15%, 2.35%, 13.5%, 34%, 34%, 13.5%. I'll go ahead and finish it out, but we've got more than the information we need. I am just going to add up all of the areas that enclose that. I need to take 13.5 plus 34 plus 34. This equals 81.5 percent. If I wanted to know the probability that x is greater than 85. I would add up the 2.35 percent plus 0.15 percent. percent. Let's try this with a different mean and standard deviation. Maybe we have a mean of 31 and a standard deviation of 5. And we want to know the probability x is less than 21. If we draw our slices for the empirical rule and put our percentages in there, I don't have to fill in anymore. I just add those two. And I know this is 0.15% plus 2.35% or 2.5%. I hope this helps you out a lot with the empirical rule. Now let's try the percentiles. I have a new mean and standard deviation, 250 mean, standard deviation of 50. We know that the 90th percentile means the probability that someone's, that 90% of the population scores less than or equal to 90%. So the percentile is the area to the left. 100 in this case is the 0.15th percentile. 150, well, I have to add all of this area to the left. 0.15 plus 2.35. So 150 is the 2.5th percentile. 200, I have to add all the area to the left of 200. Well, I already know this is 2.5 at the 150, so I take 2.5 plus 13.5, and this is the 16th percentile. The 50th percentile, the 84th percentile the 97.5th percentile, the 99.85th percentile. So if I wanted to know what the 16th percentile was, well, that would be 200.